Hey everyone, I'm Matt Cremona. And I'm Matthew Morris. And welcome to the Matt and Matthew Show. And today we're gonna to be talking about education, learning, classes, all this fun stuff, ways that we help teach ourselves or places we go to to help learn about woodworking. So Matt, take it away. Well, just a little backstory on this. So Matthew and I, we just got back from Woodworking in America. Uh, when was that, like two weeks ago? Something like that, as of this recording. And I think that, that show in itself is really like, um, it's a great opportunity to really learn a lot of things. Not just if you just take the classes, because they do have those classes there, but just because you're talking to so many people and you're exposed to so many um, you know, new concepts and different ways of doing things, just by being around that many other woodworkers, it's a totally different experience than being alone in your shop trying to learn the stuff and kind of only talking to yourself. Like we do a lot of time talking to the camera, to ourselves in a room. <laughs> Right, now Matt, you took some classes as they called them. I'm putting quotes up here. Um, they felt, I only took one, but to me they felt more like, as you were describing earlier, as lectures. Um, what's your take on that? Oh yeah, they're absolutely lectures. I would not really consider them classes. When I think woodworking class, I think that I go there, I get to hold the tools, use the tools, cut the wood, whatever, um, under the guidance of the instructor. That's what a class to me feels like it would be. These were more, the instructor was up at the front of the room um, demonstrating something, talking about something, had a slideshow, that kind of thing, and it was a lot more, it's really a one directional. I mean, you can ask questions and everything, but it's not, it's not audience driven. It was a prepared lecture that you sat through. That's still valuable. I really enjoyed them. There's some really great, great information there that they had. So not like it's a bad thing, but just a different way of doing it, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I took one, well, I sat in one with you where we watched David Marks do some turning and doing some double bevel marquetry, which uh, was very interesting to me, the double, double, double bevel marquetry <laughs> part of it. Uh, I think it was interesting to you too, but yeah, it felt more like a lecture. Now, we were talking about this before off camera, and you were saying you had not taken any structured woodworking classes, be it a semester or, or a project class or anything else like that, is that correct? That's correct, yeah, I haven't taken any hands-on classes. Yeah, and I've, I was thinking about, I think I've done three in total. I did, and they're all at the William Ming School. I did um, uh, the Nakashima uh, Kanoid, or inspired Nakashima chair, the um, Blacker House inspired chair, and I did one where we made a, um, a plane, and a, and a plane adjustment hammer as well. So those are the three I've taken, maybe in total, that accounts for um, seven, eight, nine, maybe 14, 15 days in total. So anyways, um, but, but neither one of us have been to a, an actual program where we've taken classes at a college or something like that. I teach at a college, I've been teaching at a college for 14 years, but neither one of us has actually gone to a school like the College of the Redwoods or the Inside Passage College or anything else like that and taken any classes. Instead, you know, we've been learning on our own. So Matt, for you, how did you really take this information in and start doing stuff? Yeah, for me, it was really just getting out to the shop and, and practicing. Um, for me, the most efficient way for me to learn is to get out there and do it and make the mistakes. The, the ability to make a mistake and then recover from it is so much more valuable than you know someone just telling you how to get through something. Because if you make that mistake, you know everything that went into it up to that point to get to that mistake, and then you you know in the future what not to do to make that mistake. And if you do make it again, you'll probably have a good way to fix it or resolve the issue. So that was really the way that I went, and it's really just been a lot of I'm sorry, like on the job training, I guess. The more, the more you do, the more you learn, the more you really pick up on the little things that you really, you can't get from just reading or uh, watching someone do that. Because there's just so much, there's a lot of intricacies in every operation in woodworking. And it's a lot, a lot of times it's really tactile. So you have to be the one that feels it for yourself and no one else can really explain to you effectively all of the feelings because it's, it's a total sensory thing when you're out here woodworking, right? Because you have your eyes, you can see things, 
you know, you can hear things if you're using a machine, you can hear if the machine's blocking down or if this, the, the pitch of the cut is changing, you can hear that. And you can feel it too if you're trying to push the wood through and it's slowing down, you can feel that it's starting to slow down. You know, maybe you can smell some burning. So woodworking is really a sensory thing. All your senses are engaged all the time when you're doing this. And most of the time when you're learning, the only things engaged is maybe your eyes if you're reading or your eyes and your ears if you are um, watching a video about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, I started with books and then I moved on to, um, you know, doing stuff on my own, obviously because of the books. And then I moved on to trying to buy videos. So I bought like all the Mark Adams videos. I bought stuff from Popular Woodworking and then Fine Woodworking started having videos as well. And at the same time, I think for both of us, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, but we were, I have paid, I think I've paid Mark, um, the Wood Whisperer, uh, maybe two years in total. And I've never actually built any of his projects or for, and in that matter, any of the videos that I've ever purchased any of those particular projects. But I've learned so much from watching other people work and how they approached their projects, the intricacies, the, um, how they went about their processes in um, those videos. And those for me were very, very valuable. I can watch them, rewind them, watch them again and apply those techniques to something I may be trying to do on my own. So that to me was a big jump when I moved from just reading and doing to watching and then trying out the things I want to do on my own. How about you, Matt? It's pretty much exactly how it went for me. Uh, when I started, there wasn't a whole lot of um, video stuff online. So I did the whole books thing for a while. And then as, as video really started to mature, as I was trying to get, as it kind of, video kind of matured as I matured into the craft, really. Um, so when I started, it was all reading books. And you know, that got me pretty, you know, pretty well far enough to get some basic projects done. Um, but the online video is where it really happened for me. There was just so much more information that I could see and um, get from a video than I could from reading about it. And I did the, the Guild with Mark as well. I started in 2010 and I'm still doing the membership thing. I have all the projects that he's ever put out there. And like you said, it's not really the project that he's making that is really valuable to me. It's how he's working, the different ways of solving problems that you can take to your own shop. And as you're trying to solve something on your own, you might think about a part of the project that someone else did in a video and you think, oh, maybe I should try that on this project. And it's exactly what you're looking for. So it's not always about, I got this video because I want to make this project. It's I got this video because I want to learn about all of the the intricacies that go into making this project and how I can apply that to my future projects. Right, absolutely. I, I love watching the new stuff that Fine Woodworking keeps putting out um, because I mean you get to sit and and spend you know hours with Tim Rousseau and his shop. Now I would love to be able to go to his school and spend you know nine weeks to the nine week intensive or the 12 month or something like that but I don't have the time because I have a real job um, right now, and but I'd love to do that. But just the opportunity to spend that time with him in the shop, and he just learned so much from him and all the other great you know, woodworkers that they're shooting and um, stuff that Popular Woodworking is doing as well. I don't want to be unfair to either one of the two, um, but those are great ways, for me at least, to continue evolving by watching those really great people build. Now, um, I think you may have started watching YouTube videos and learning some YouTube woodworking um, way before I did because you were on YouTube way before I was. Um, what have you found on there and what um, lessons have you come out, have you learned from watching stuff on YouTube? Yeah, that's a good question. And I don't, I haven't really been doing the YouTube thing for a whole lot of time. Um, for a long time, I knew YouTube existed and I knew that there was videos there but I didn't really know about this whole like subscribe thing. So the only way I got to YouTube was through like a link from somewhere else that sent me to a video I should watch on YouTube. And then that never really translated into like a place where I should go to find content all the time. But once it did though, once I kind of clicked in my mind that, oh, I should 
come here and I should subscribe to different channels and I can watch their videos as they're coming out. That really changed the game for me as far as online content went. Um, and now it's like an addiction for me. I'm on YouTube every single day, not just because I'm a content creator, <laughs> but because I really enjoy it. And what it's really taught me more than anything is that there's this community there. And just like everywhere you can go for a common interest thing, there is that community part. So it's, for me, it's really interesting to see what everyone else is working on, which is, that's cool, that's great, but the really, the really, really awesome part of it is that I can watch, or I have been watching, people progress through their, I don't know, experience level, getting better and better and better, and producing finer and finer things. Now you can go back and you can watch some of their first videos and you can see the things that they're making. And even that, that holds true for the videos as well. The video might not have been that great either. And now you look at the videos they're producing now and the videos are this awesome and their projects are at this higher level than they were when they started. And it's been really exciting, really interesting for me to be able to follow these people along their journey to where they're at now and to continue going even further. You know, and since we create stuff too, it's at least I don't know about you, but for me, it's hard to watch everybody else's stuff. I really try to do it during like off times and stuff. And I hear what you're saying. It's, um, but I'm definitely learning a lot of stuff from the, from the channels I am watching. So thank you to everybody who's creating that content, by the way. Um, it's really invaluable for the entire community. Now, if I had everything to do over again and I knew now what I wanted, what I really loved when I was 18, I would have said, hey, let's go to college, let's, you know, let's go to North Bennett or Inside Passage or, or, or College of the Redwoods or something like that um, and do that. Uh, I don't, unfortunately, can't go back in time. I'm not Doctor Who. I don't have a, a TARDIS where I can just go back and tell myself to do that. Um, I was just watching Doctor Who tonight, by the way. But um, <laughs> if I did, that's what I would do. But now going forward, I think... Um, for us at least, and why don't you start with this first, um, what made you feel that you were at the time in, in your progression of woodworking, Matt, that you were ready to start sharing your stuff instructionally with everybody else? That's a great question. Um, if I didn't have an amazing audience that's already following me with the videos I produce, I wouldn't know that my my skill was there, I guess. The, the, the interesting thing about the online content creation is you get a lot of feedback from a lot of people and things you wouldn't really think of yourself as or you don't think is true based on how you view your own work, someone can come along or a lot of people can come along and tell you the opposite. So before I started making videos, I really didn't think that I was that great of a teacher or an instructor, or I wasn't able to explain things really well. That's how I felt about it. But numerous people tell me, you know, pretty frequently, and I really appreciate it, that they like the way that I explain things. And I never thought about that before I made the videos. Because why would I? <laughs> you know, it's one of those weird things. And I'm really happy that people really enjoy it, and then people really kind of connect to the way that I explain things and, and teach things. I mean, I really, I honestly, when I started, I didn't think of it as teaching. It was more just, I guess, sharing would be a good word for it. But as I've progressed through it, I've been able to see that there is an opportunity here for me to actually teach, which I think is incredibly valuable. And I'm really looking forward to, ex you know, exploring that a lot more here as we go into the future. So, I mean, that's how it happened for me. What about, what about for you? When did it really become evident to you that you should be teaching these things. By the way, guys, I keep watching Matt trying to knock gnats all off of himself all over the place. I think he's being eaten alive on the other side of the country. But um, so for me, shoot, that's a really good question. Um, so obviously, as you guys know, I film myself and I have these online classes too. And we're trying not to make this a self-promotional video at all. Um, I, I really mean that. So for me, um, I, f Matt's laughing at me, by the way, guys, but seriously, um, yeah, he's always laughing at me, but I, I was building commission work before, so I started doing furniture, um, and people liked that, and I just got, I didn't want to keep building the same thing over and over again, 
So I felt that I wanted to start building stuff that I wanted to build for myself. And I figured, well, I still want to make enough money somehow to you know, turn the lights on in the shop, buy new tools, buy the wood that's behind me. And um, if I was lucky, make a little bit extra to help pay for some bills around the house doing this. So I started filming myself, building some of the projects I built for other people. And then hopefully I could expand just like I did into this Gamble House rocking chair, something I've always wanted to build, just never had the time. So um, that's kind of why I got into the filming myself thing, was to hopefully build something that would grow. And at the same time, you know, contribute to the community as well. I mean, I, just like you, Matt, I try to put out videos that um, give you know, snippets or um, little lessons um, up on YouTube as well, or write little things for the blog on my site, you know, how I approached fixing a, a leg that had broken on a chair or, or something like that. So, um, but for me, I'm continuously learning though. I'm still taking the, watching you know, the stuff that Fine Woodworking's putting out or Popular Woodworking's putting out or you're putting out, Matt, or other people on YouTube because it's, you can never really stop learning either. There's so much out there. I'm, you know, the double bevel marker tree that David Marks did, I'd love to do that in some of my projects. Um, I'm gonna have the need to go out. Unfortunately, after watching that, now I wanna spend some money and um, get his DVD and then I gotta get a scroll saw. And of course he said I can't get anything below a DeWalt or an Excalibur because anything else just doesn't do the job um, any justice. So now I'm really in trouble because both of those are not inexpensive. <laughs> Um, nor do I know where I, may, I even have room for it, let alone. So we're just, I think for me at least, even though I'm trying to teach, I'm still trying to learn myself to expand um, my knowledge base as well. How about you, Matt? Oh, I, absolutely. I don't, think, I don't think as a woodworker you can really say that you're done and just, be, just turn yourself off to learning. You, no matter what, you're always going to be learning something new. There's always something new to explore. And... I mean, I would go back to going back to woodworking in America. There's so much there that you can learn and explore just by being there and meeting people and attending some of the sessions. Um, the nice one, I don't want to plug woodworking in America too much, but the one thing I like about their sessions is it gets you in front of some of these really amazing instructors who don't really produce content, right? You know, you can't just go online and watch a bunch of videos by you know Will Neptune, oh, maybe he has a few, but or Alf Sharp. You know they don't have like their own YouTube channels where they're producing all these videos that you can watch. You know if you want to learn about that niche thing, like I want to learn about um, period work. I mean, well they got people there. That that's all I do is period work. So it, it's really great to be able to get in front of those people because they're masters in their area of woodworking. So I think it's really great that we're living in the time that we're living in because. If this was 25 years ago or 15 years ago, we wouldn't be able to um, get this knowledge the way we're getting it now uh, at all. I mean, there'd just be books or traditional schools, not online schools or YouTube, uh, maybe these conferences, but you know, that's really just about it. Um, so yeah, it's great that we're here at the time we are now, I think. Well, I mean, there's still be video. I mean, there's those, uh, you remember those VHS things? <laughs> right, you could watch uh, Mark Adams over and over on his little VHS tapes that eventually became DVDs and now are sold online. So yeah, I guess you're right. We had VHS or beta before. It was a little fuzzier than this high definition online video stuff. You know, and if you had the ability to go anywhere and do anything as far as learning woodworking, what would you want to do? Would you want to spend, do an intense? Would you want to spend a couple of years somewhere? What, what would you want to do? I don't know if I want to spend a couple of years somewhere, but I would really want to go to the North Banistry School because um, I really like period work, and that's something that really fascinates me and it's really interesting to me, and that's an area that I really can see myself going down the road a little bit more as I go further into my woodworking life here. So that would be a great place to learn a lot about period work um, just because they have some really great instructors there who are just awesome, awesome um, masters of their craft as far as period furniture goes so that's where I want to go at least I want to go visit there at least someday in my life because I think that'd be really cool to actually go there and see the facility at the very least how about you where you want to go 
Um, I would like to be able to, uh, uh, I don't know if apprentice is the right word, or I just like to be able to throw a cot out in the corner, get a little mini fridge or something, and live with Jeff Miller for like three or four months or something and pick his brain for every single detail about whatever he's learned about chairs for his, from his entire life. Um, that's what I would really like to do. I love building chairs if you guys haven't known that already. And um, I would love to learn everything he knows about building chairs. Maybe some way if it was from a Doctor Who episode I could just like suck out his, his brain knowledge and put it in mine. I'd, I'd do that instead too, but um, I'm pretty sure that they won't let me do that. Don't, don't steal his brain, please. He needs it. <laughs> okay. Okay, well that's what I want. I want his chair knowledge, chair building knowledge. So, um, but I, you know, I guess if you're young and you're looking to start, you know, the idea of going to school would be really great, but at the same time there's all these other places that you can get this information from now as well. But going back to, at least in my mind, to an ep the episode we did with Matt Kenny, we were talking to Matt about this, the best thing I think what you do and what I do, Matt, is we just get in the shop and we do, 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 and we try to learn every what we can by doing it over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. What, what Matt said was, always be building. Yes, absolutely. And that's the best way to learn, right? Practice makes perfect. Yep, absolutely. Get out there and learn and practice and teach yourself. Right, so you know what that means, guys? That means you should rewatch all of our videos at least 10 times. <laughs> Okay, maybe just 12. <laughs> okay, Matt keeps laughing, so I'm just gonna up the ante. You have to watch every single video we've ever done 20 times, and the dovetail ones Matt's done, at least 20 more, because you, you can't get enough of his dovetails, right? But in all seriousness, get out there and do, 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 learn, learn, learn. Uh, talking about practice makes perfect, though. Like, how many videos have you done so far? Um, you mean videos on YouTube or just classes or what are you talking to about i don't know it's what I, either one um you know i don't know i've lost count um well I, I i cheated a little bit and i i say i cheated a little bit because the entire um gamble house armchair series is actually up on youtube the plans aren't there all those videos are so i think that's 26 chapters and then um plus all my other stuff i don't know maybe i've got about 60 or 70 videos up so far as the weekly shop updates and the, and the tips and the tool reviews um, and then of course I've done the five total projects and each one of them has a whole bunch of you know hours and hours of content the gamble rocker was uh, just a little bit over eight hours long in total with 33 chapters lots of steps uh, how about I know you've got a lot more than I, than I do Matt I think right oh my channel uh, on my channel I have like 160 something videos but what i was getting at was the that's you can kind of take a parallel with the video making to to woodworking so if you go back and you watch some of your earlier videos they're probably not nearly as polished or maybe your on camera personality isn't quite there compared to where it is now and i think it's a really good parallel that i mean we can we can associate with it because we make videos and we can see that progression not everybody can if you do make videos, you definitely can. But you, I mean, you, did you go to school for making videos? Um, yeah, my, well, yes and no. I mean, I have a degree in, in um, radio television and um, I did post-production uh, for TV commercials when I was younger, so I was an After Effects artist. So I did compositing, uh, animation, and special effects for um, pre-visualizations and for TV commercials and for TV shows for about five years. So. A little bit, but not in front of the camera at all, but behind the camera instead. Yeah, that's all post stuff, all that pre pre production and then in production stuff. That's a whole nother thing, and especially when you're doing it all yourself. It, exactly. That's not like getting up in front of the camera and saying, "Today is Thursday, October third. It's time for another weekly shop update." I mean, you got to bring that energy with you. Um, you know, the whole thing. And yeah, absolutely, you're right, Matt. My my videos at the beginning, I was sitting in here, they were. Uh, let's talk about this now instead of being energetic <laughs> pushing and um, just trying to you know convey my love of the craft 
through my personality into the camera, into your viewing screen so that you would enjoy it as much as I did. So yeah, absolutely, that has changed. You know what? I've definitely watched a few of your older ones because they just kind of pop up. After I'm done watching one of yours, the next video comes up and it's like 2014 in June or something. And um, I think you're a little bit shorter in those too. And there's definitely a lot more here. But um, yeah, those are different too. Yeah, they were a little rough in the beginning, that's for sure. It's great parallel that you drew between the, our videos and, and the woodworking. Yeah, it's the same thing, you just gotta keep doing it until you, and you'll just get better and better every time you do it. Yeah, better, faster. I mean, a lot of things I've noticed like through my progression with the videos too is that like, some, some of them are faster now, but I can tell like when I'm out here producing them, that process goes a lot faster as well. Um, maybe just because I have less, uh, re less retakes on the, uh, on the uh, whatever you want to call it, the, uh, the talking bits. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, I think we've done a pretty good job covering this. Is there anything you can think that we may have missed or forgot about? Um, no, not really. Uh, I think, well, yeah, one thing, one thing about this whole craft is you have to have a passion for it. Um, if you like, kind of like, I would like to do woodworking. I don't know why, I don't really care about it, but I think that'd be really cool to be a woodworker, but I don't really care about it that much. Probably not going to work out so well. But if you have a passion for it and you're always trying to improve and try new things and get better at what you're doing then then the rest will come because you have that passion it doesn't matter all the extra external forces on you you have that passion you're always going to be progressing through the craft so that's what i would add at least absolutely you have to love it you have to want to wake up in the morning and do it um just like when matt dances all the time and um no, you just have to get up and want to do it and just live it, breathe it, eat it, sleep it, or dream it, the whole nine yards. So, um, so yeah, I think that was a, a pretty good episode. What do you think, Matt? They all are. <laughs> yes. So as always, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and um, where can they find you, Matt? You can find me and everything I do at my website. That's at mattcremona.com. And you can find everything that I do at my website at mmwoodstudio.com. And uh, we'll see you guys in, well, in a while. Oh, we'll leave it at that. Open-ended. I love it. Who knows when we'll be back? Ciao. Bye. <laughs>